Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to give you some information about the update, aka RC4, of the Retro Arena for the RG351P and RG351M. The first thing I've gone and done is I've updated Retro Arts to the latest 1.9.12 version, both for the 32 and for the 64-bit versions of Retro Arts. Along with that, I've updated the Gambit and Quick Ness cores for RetroArch and added Duck Station, which is a PlayStation core, to RetroArch 32. The Gambit and Nestopia cores have additional color palette options, and you can enable it so that you can just tap the L trigger here to switch through the different color palettes and not have to go into the menu every time. That menu has not changed under options, but in Tools, I've added a Theme Master here. I'm not going to go into this because you've seen it in all the other builds too, but it's here now. You can download from the main repo, the Kodi repo, or the JetUp repo for themes. This theme that you're seeing right now is a Kodi theme. As you can see, there's quite a lot of ports here, including Half-Life, which does run on this device. Kodi does work, but it's a little bit shaky. Still a work in progress. K-Real started that, but then he was never completely done it, and he's no longer part of the scene, really, so... Got to do what we got to do. This here is Ports Master by Christian Haitian. I think there's currently, he said, 53 or 54 ports available through Ports Master. And all you got to do is you just go through the list here, pick what you want, and install it. Now, keeping in mind, games like, say, Hydra Castle Labyrinth, those are not freeware. You must own the game in order to have it. So you will get the skeleton files, and you must upload your own game files. I'll just install something quick to show you the process. It's just this. It'll go through until it's finished. It'll install everything and inflate it for you. And that's that. That's all you got to do. It will take a minute. Absolutely normal for it to take a minute. It's downloading and installing things on your device. There you go. As it said on the screen, you must restart Emulation Station. If you do not restart Emulation Station, it just won't reload the listings and you won't see what you've installed. Also, it can take a minute while you're exiting as well as it's placing all the files and doing what it does. And you can't see what's going on, but there is things going on in the background. Now, with that being said, I'll give you an overview. I'm just going to quickly talk while I scroll through the systems to give you an idea of what's all here. There will be another update coming where you will have to reflash your image. And I apologize for that, but it will be the final one. RC5, which will be the next release. I don't have an exact time or date for it yet. But what I'm going to do is, much like my Odroid Go Super build, I'm going to create it so that the ROMs partition is NTFS, and that is the partition that auto-expands at first boot. This will allow users to be able to fill their SD cards from Windows directly and not need to use Wi-Fi or a Linux-based computer to do it. And also, I want to get the over-the-air updater installed on here like there are on every other device. And I did install it on here, and it does work, but it broke some of the libsdl2 and armhf libraries, which made RetroArch32 not work. So that's got to be resolved first, because I don't feel that it's a fair trade to lose PlayStation in order to be able to get that feature. But truth be told... If I were to release an update for this and people did not want to have to reflash their SD card, with the way that I package my updates, you could quite literally open the zip file, drag and drop it to the root of your card over WinSCP, and it would do the same thing as installing via the OTA updater anyways. All you need to do is do that and run fixed permissions afterwards. If you're willing to go that route, I can also quite possibly give the OTA updater without requiring a reflash, but you will have to drag and drop the contents of a zip file to the root of your card. I do it so that all the folders are already created, so say for example you want to update RetroArch, it would be inside the zip you would see opt, RetroArch, bin, and then the files so that it would overwrite the existing files and put everything where it needed to be. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of systems on here. We're up to well over 100 now. We've got the theme downloader. We've got a port downloader. We've got the built-in Wi-Fi, obviously. Everything works well with that. And in the next update, we will have an NTFS ROMs partition. I will move BIOS into ROMs as well, so that it doesn't take up space on the internal card. And we will have the OTA updater installed. 
That's going to about do it for this video. I just wanted to give everybody an update as to what was going on and make sure people were aware that there had been some changes made and that this device is still supported. I would like to thank, thank Ambernick for sending me this device because I had one for about a year and I used it to do so much dev work and things on that it no longer powers on. So I reached out to them and asked them for a replacement so I could continue to update the device and they sent me one and I've got it and here we are now. As always, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also I would like to announce for those of you that have been asking me what kind of video games I play online where you might be able to interact or play with me. Currently I play Call of Duty, Cold War and Warzone. And I also started a new game called New World where I'm in a faction called Cutthroats. It's a PvP oriented game, MMO, with a lot of content in it for PvE as well. But if you're in the market for a new game or a new MMO, you might want to check out New World. If you do that, you can leave and you can get in touch with me on the Discord or you can contact me here in the comment section and I will let you know what world that I'm on and what faction I'm in. And we do have room for a few more members in our faction, so you know, it is what it is. Anyways, take care. Thanks for watching.